Okay, testing to make sure everything is good to go. I think this may be the last video that I upload to the channel before the new year, so it's uh, it, it's not according to the schedule that I made, unfortunately, because I've had to abandon best made best laid plans just to be able to uh, do things. So what this video is going to be is just an extension to the book haul that I had earlier this month showcasing some books that I did not get a chance to showcase in that video and showcasing my very large holiday haul which I will get into in this video. Hi everyone my name is Rose also known as T.A. Summers. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a gigantic book haul. Basically that is all we're going to be able to do like for this last video of 2023. There were several books that I omitted from my last book haul that I didn't get a chance to showcase because of when they arrived and also because I unfortunately just uh, did not get a chance to be able to share them in that video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with those and then I'm going to get into my holiday haul. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. So the first couple of books that I want to highlight are ones that unfortunately I was not able to include in my last video and I wanted to spotlight them because of how important they are to me. So the very first one that I want to talk about essentially is a book that I special ordered from and I've talked about my love for the Final Fantasy franchise on the channel before and this um, book, particular book came from Final Fantasy Union who I have talked about before on the channel as well um, in terms of like following it for the following the um, channel for Final Fantasy lore, deep dives, um, things like that. So Daryl who is one of the creators behind Final Fantasy Union actually penned a book that is called The Legacy of the Crystal which is an unofficial guide to Final Fantasy and it is a book that is very lovingly made, very lovingly crafted in terms of different things about the Final Fantasy franchise and Square and showcases a lot of different tidbits about different uh, Final Fantasies and you can see that I have the uh, book right here in terms of like an example of what it looks like on the inside but I forgot to showcase the Legacy of the Crystal um, on my last video and I was bummed about it because I was like I wanted to spotlight this like on the channel like to be able to showcase it and uh, say that I got a copy of it because it was in limited print and um, there were a lot of like uh, uh, goodies that came with it in terms of things you can see for example um, like some of these art prints these are so lovely like in terms of things here's another one that is an art print as well as you can see another art print here which is a, um, a another version of the cover and then this is another one as well which is really really cool to be able to see the different um, types of artwork and characters um, here that really just really well done and it's also personalized and signed to me um, in terms of things, I don't know if I can show this. This, this was signed by Daryl himself, so that was really cool to be able to um, pick up and have in my collection. So I am definitely cherishing this Legacy of the Crystal, and I will give you my thoughts on it um, when I have the chance to be able to peruse it in full. But I wanted to highlight and spotlight this on the channel, um, it, it, especially being uh, a person who loves Final Fantasy and it, it has always wanted to be able to peruse um, things that are uh, chronicling the history of the games that are being made the behind the scenes deep dives things like that and I really enjoy following Final Fantasy Union um, to be able to get videos uh, on this type of content as well and if you're not following them and uh, you love Final Fantasy I would definitely recommend that you do follow them on YouTube. The second book that I want to highlight is one that I did spotlight on the last video in terms of my um, book haul but I had had one of the um, books highlighted this one did finally arrive this is um, vintage black glamour um, by michelle gain and this is gentleman's quarter so this is a different book than the other book that i showcased this is um showcasing a lot of like uh, black male talent in hollywood retro hollywood and you can see a lot of different profiles of different people here 
um, in terms of like uh, different um, means of entertainment and impact. Um, you can even see that, like, this is an example, I'll um, showcase this, uh, Barry White and George Benson, both musicians, and um, they have, like, profiles in this particular book, so it's just really well composed and done. I will give a review of this on the channel when I, I get an opportunity to do so. It's not, a, it's not a long read, but it's definitely one that I will cherish for quite some time, and I include it with my other vintage black glamour um, book in terms of coffee table books that I'm definitely keeping holding on to and cherishing in terms of their um, content and impact so I will be reviewing this as soon as I get the opportunity to do so. Now we're going to get into a little bit of a haul where I am intentionally not going to read out the titles for these particular books and I'm going to tell you the reason why. There is currently a boycott going on for St. Martin's Press and its imprints because of an issue with one of their employees boosting and sharing very racist content that has been gone, that has gone unaddressed by the company. I know that uh, Reads with Rachel has done some uh, like a bit on it. I know my name's Marines has done a bit on it. I know Jess Owens has done a bit on it, and I can link their videos explaining the situation down um, in the in the um, text box below. But uh, I decided to join that boycott as well in terms of things. I will not be highlighting or speaking about certain St. Martin's Press. I will be still continuing to buy books from authors who are under that imprint, including Wednesday Books. But the thing about it is it's like what the boycott is specifically calling um, to for people to do is you can still buy books by authors who are under those imprints, but um, to hold reviews and not talk about those titles in terms of um, things because of that employee who um, is alleged to have withhold held um, um, arcs and um, other um materials that are used in the promotion of um, books that are not yet um, published from certain readerships because of their backgrounds and I think and it's it, it's specific to I think like a number of different things but I think it has to do with anti-palestinian um, um, stuff and other um, things that this employee has been engaged with so I, I I definitely um salute the people who organized this particular boycott. I hope that the company addresses it sooner than later in terms of the issues and uh, listens to the uh, readers and um, bookstagrammers and booktubers and uh, book talkers who are highlighting this issue and there's a resolution to be had with it soon. But I'm going to share with you three books that I picked up under this imprint. I'm not going to talk about them. I'm just going to show them just for your reference, but you can find the, uh, you can see the titles in this segment here. I bought all of these from the same bookshop. I believe this came from the Meet Cute bookshop, which is a, an indie bookstore that sells romance titles and other titles in San Diego. And I kind of went on a book buying spree in terms of things, but these are the specific books that are under the Wednesday's Books imprint for St. Martin's Press. And I'm just going to showcase them without talking about them, just for your reference, in terms of why you may see some creators not talk about these specific titles. Here's the first one. This one bumps me out because it is Indigenous, um, um, written, penned with an Indigenous character. This is the second book. Many of you have probably already seen this book quite a bit in terms of things. And then this is the third book, as you can see. And that's just for your reference in terms of things. I will try to see if I can read these, but it may be a while before I can, until the boycott is uh, officially over, I will not be talking about these or other titles that are published under St. Martin's Press. So the next couple of books I realized I did not have physical copies of in my collection and 
if you've watched my channel before, you will know that I've read Queen Move, but I have not read these other two books in the same collection for this, and they have changed the covers for this particular series now um, in terms of things to be a bit more discreet. But I was able to track down the original covers for this respective series, and I'm glad that I was able to find them. Though it is, they are very hard to find, and if you do find them, they are usually very expensive. And I did pay a pretty penny to be able to get these two books, but you'll probably already know, recognize that this is from the All the King's Men series by Kennedy Ryan. I got the original book covers, the first one being the King Mac Baker. This is the cover right here for your reference. And then this is the redesigned cover for your reference if you're looking at what it looks like now. And then the second book in the series is The Rebel King, and this is the cover for the second book in the series in terms of the old cover. And then the newer cover I'll put up here for your reference in terms of things. I'm kind of bummed that uh, the covers were redesigned because look at these. These are so pretty. Um, and and they and they make sense in terms of the content in terms of um, things, but you know it is what it is in terms of things. I kind of understand. I and I'm not opposed to the actual new covers for this respective series. It's just I see this cover trend of discrete covers, and some part of me like some some of them are done well, like with Kennedy Ryan's ones are they're um pretty much done well, and then there are others of them where I'm just like. <sighs> I, I don't understand why you did that, but I think one example would be the design covers for um, uh, Christina Lauren's uh, series, which I'll put an example of the covers for you right here, like compared to the original ones, which I'm like, why why would you do that? Because it looks so generic in terms of the way that you chose to do it that way. But um, it, it is what it is. I'm not 100% sure why that's um, a thing, but... You know, and it may be an unpopular opinion, but I, I, I do like being able to see, you know, the characters represented, especially when you have characters of color, BIPOC characters who are in a story, being able to see that visual representation of them and then also being able to see, you know, that the imagery of it, like represent the actual tone of the book. Is something that's important to me in terms of having uh, physical books in my collection so like I knew that I wanted to uh, get the All of the King's Men series like in terms of the original covers because I felt like they did so well in terms of being able to communicate tone as well as the representation of the characters but you know it is what it is and that's just by minor rant spiel there. I, I, I promise I won't go into any other rants or spiels in this video in terms of stuff, but I'm, I'm very happy that I was able to find the originals for these books. I realized after the fact that I did not showcase two books in this haul and for the last couple of hauls for um, this video in terms of things. So I definitely need to highlight the fact that I got Illumicrate editions for Leah Bardugo's Ninth House as well as Hellbent, which is the duology, um, very popular duology that um, um, she penned that um, I wanted to highlight. And they are beautiful, beautiful editions. This is for Ninth House here, as you can see. And this is the cover for it as well for your reference in terms of things. I unfortunately was not able to showcase this and, and you can tell it's an Illumicrate exclusive um, from this. Let's see, and then the other one is Hellbent, which won the Goodreads Choice Award for our fantasy this year. So you can see this is a really beautiful cover. I See, I approve of this cover over the other rabbit cover, which was a little bit more heroin. But still, I, I do like how like the, the dark uh, scheme and color scheme of these particular editions are. And it's really, really pretty. And like you, you can tell it's sprayed edges and things like that. So yeah. So I'm glad to have these in my collection as collector's editions. 
and um, I will give you my thoughts on both of these. I've read a part of Ninth House. It has a lot of triggering topics, so like I did uh, put it on pause for a little bit, but I am planning on um, reading both of these titles and giving you my thoughts on them once I'm finished. So there's that. I forgot to put this in the main video, so now you know. So um, we'll get back into the main video with the other books in this haul. Another series that I was very, very happy to be able to get physical copies of these respective books in um, terms of things, uh, like I, I've talked about it on the channel before, especially I think it was back when I was doing the Final Fantasy um, uh, book tag um, video when I was talking about the, the one that I created in terms of the Final Fantasy Legacy book tag. I had mentioned that um, one of the um, main male characters in this respective series is a uh, uh, like a kind of a bookish crush uh, a book boyfriend that I have so I had read one of the books in this series um, before through audio and like I really enjoyed it and I had also had like the third book in the series as a galley from net galley but I realized that that was the third book in the series and I would have to go back and get the other ones so I kind of held off on it but still ended up reading it out of order but I do now have all four books in this series and it's by an author I, I do really respect and adore Nalini Singh. This is the Hard Play um, series which the first book in the series starts with Cherish Hard. This is the cover for your reference. And then this is my favorite book in the series so far that I've read. This is Rebel Hard. And I talked about this on the channel before. I am going to give a full review of this respective series on the channel once I have the opportunity to be able to read all of these books. The third book in that series is the one that I had as a galley and I got a physical copy of it. This is Love Hard. As you can see this is the cover here. And then the latest book in the series, and I think this may be the last book in the series, this is Kiss Hard. And this is the cover for your reference. I'm trying to make sure that this camera is not out of focus in terms of things because I think it's a little bit awkward on the tripod, but we'll make do uh, what we can make do with this. So the next uh, showcase that I want to do are a couple of books that were a part of a series that like I thought that it was only a duology it's actually a quartet and I was very happy to um, figure out that uh, this series was picked up and um, finished by um, one of my favorite authors Devin Monk this is an urban fantasy series I've talked about uh, the first two books on this uh, the channel before but I was able to pick up the third and fourth book of this respective series this is the B broken magic series so the third book in this respective series is backlash I believe it's Cindy if I remember correctly let's see publisher is old house press okay so this was uh, under a different house than um, it, the original um, um, duology was published under but yeah this is the third book of the Broken Magic series and then the fourth um, book is called Dirty Work so you can see this is the cover for this for your reference I will put up the two uh, the covers of the first two books in terms of the old series as well as the um, newly designed covers um, for those two books up here for your reference, but I'm planning to read all four and give a review of this urban fantasy series on my channel for sure. Like I, I love Devin Monk. I really uh, need to read as many books by Devin Monk as I ha own in my collection in terms of things and how much I have read from her um, over uh, time, I definitely want to be able to re uh, uh, share more of her work on the channel to be able to highlight um, just the, the contributions that she has had f uh, for urban fantasy and like I, I respect her work quite a bit so I definitely want to highlight her on the channel. Next two books are adult romance. Uh, these are Harlequin. One of them is Harlequin Desire and the other one is Harlequin uh, special edition. I recently just got the unpicked um, these up because I think they ha both had recent releases. So I'm going to highlight on um, these um, for you right now. The um, 
first one that I want to highlight is the special edition one. This is part of the Once Upon a Wedding series by Mona Shroff. I've talked about um, this particular series on the channel in terms of being able to read it, but this is the fifth book in that series. Um, this is their Accidental Honeymoon. And as you can see, this is the cover right here. Really, really cute. <laughs> and I'm excited to be able to read like all of the books in this respective series. And then this Harlequin Desire is a compilation of two um, books. One is by Nadine Gonzalez and the other one is by Rachel Bailey. Uh, the first one is Miami Marriage Impact and the second one is Overnight Inheritance. And this is the cover for it for your reference. They are uh, available as separate titles on um, digital if you would prefer to um, purchase them separately. But I went ahead and, and for the physical copy, like just, just uh, decided to be able to pick up both of them because I wanted to read them. And it's really, really cute cover. I, it, like I said, I am bummed that Harlequin Desire is closing after some, quite some time. It seems like um, the authors and the titles are going to be folded into other imprints for um, Harlequin, but I, it's because I I loved what they were able to do with Harlequin uh, Desire, like in terms of the uh, type of um, books that they write and like the different couples that they um, showcase. But I'm definitely going to be reading this and I'll give you my thoughts once I pick it up. Okay, that there we go. That's a little bit. It kept wanting to drift on me a little bit and be a little bit crooked in terms of the thing. So I think we're we're okay now. It was cutting off my head a little bit, like in terms of things when I was sharing like some of the other books that I had. But we'll we'll, we'll um, adjust in editing probably. But um, this next segment of books came from my local indie bookstore. So um, I'm going to share showcase all of these. It's a total of one, two, three, four, five, six books. And um, they're from various genres. And I'm just going to go through them relatively quickly. First one is one that I've wanted to get my hands on for the longest time. And now I do have this in my collection. I had originally think I think I had gotten this from the library before but it kept getting recalled so I decided to find, try to see if I could find it to put it in my uh, collection for reference but this is Love After the End. This is an anthology of Two-Spirit and Dinja Queer speculative um, fiction by Joshua Whitehead and this is the cover for it for your reference. I've heard a lot of people talk about this collection of stories and now I, I'm very happy to have it in my collection to be able to read so I will um, get to this as soon as I can. It's not not too long of a read. I think it's probably only like it's less than 200 pages I believe so I know that I could probably fly through this and give my thoughts about it. Second book is considering that I wanted to add more Palestinian authors to my collection as well as read um, them and highlight them on the channel. This was a no-brainer for me to um, be able to pick up. This is from Susan Ab Abu Wahawa which is uh, Against the Loveless World. And this is the cover for your reference um, for the physical copy. I think it has a couple of cover versions. I'll put up one for your reference in terms of things, but I was able to get this from my um, indie bookstore and um, be able to uh, add it to my collection. So I'm excited to be able to read this for myself and give you my thoughts about it. In the same vein, I was also able to pick up a group of um, Palestinian authors in the speculative fiction collection. This is Palestine 100 stories from a century after the Nakba. And as you can see, this is the cover right here. This is edited by Basma Kahalayini. And I do want to be able to get to this as soon as I possibly can. This is also a sh relatively short read. I think it's about 220 some pages in terms of highlighting various Palestinian authors in the speculative type um, um, fiction collection in terms of um, saying like what would happen after the Nakba 100 years um, down the line and um, in 20 in the year 2048 and this was originally written I believe in let me see if I can get the the date that it was published. This was published um, back in uh, 2019. So um, it doesn't like it's uh, definitely a timely read in terms of being able to see 
uh, the um, different stories that are highlighted in this respective co collection. I'm excited to be able to read it. I'm humbled to be able to read it, and I hope to give my thoughts about this as soon as I possibly can. So the next book is also adult fiction. This is one that uh, caught my attention when I was browsing my um, indie bookstore. I wasn't necessarily looking for this particular title and it caught my attention in terms of reading the uh, description on the back in terms of being a uh, from the back cover, a searing portrait of a young couple in North Korea fighting in their fight for love and freedom. This is The Last Exiles by Ann Shen. As you can see, this is the cover for reference. Um, I, I definitely wanted to be able to pick this up given the premise of it and um, being able to read from this author because I have not read from this author before. And I thought that it would be a very interesting, important uh, novel to be able to read. And Shen is a uh, poet and um, documentary filmmaker. I believe this may be her first novel. Let me see if that's correct. Yes. It, so this is um, Anne Shen's first uh, adult fiction novel. So I'm hoping to be able to read it soon and give you my thoughts. This next book is adult fiction as well. And I originally got this as a galley. And I knew I wanted to read it. This looks like it would be, it will be a fun, sweet read. And it was blurred by Andalia Adler, who I um, very much respect in terms of the contributions that she has had to um, literature, especially uh, with respect to young adult literature. But I think this is an adult uh, adult romance book, if I remember correctly. And I think it's published by yeah, it's published by Berkeley Romance. This is Talene Voskuni's Sorry, Bro. Great title, by the way, and also a very cute cover. I'm really excited to be able to read this and give you my thoughts on it once I get a chance to pick it up. And then lastly, um, this is a book that I also got as a galley and I had actually picked up from my library, but unfortunately I kept having to return it in terms of stuff because of how popular it was, but I am glad to have it in my collection. This is Jason June's Out of the Blue. And I, I, I'm a sucker for um, mer people in, in YA. Like this is a YA romance, uh, like a really cute, really fun um, LGBTQ um, read. I'm hoping to be able to pick it up very soon and give you my thoughts on it. I, but I knew I wanted to have the paperback version in my collection in terms of stuff. It's, it's just a cute cover and it's a cute premise as well. So uh, I'm excited to be able to read it. So these next several books are from the Meet Cute bookstore that is from San Diego. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I had showcased some of the books that I had gotten from that bookstore um, that had um, that were under St. Martin's Press Wednesday um, titles, but these these next several books are uh, under different imprints and under um, various different um, categories. So I can talk about them and share them and give you my uh, my thoughts in terms of uh, what I what, what I, when I plan to read them and um, be able to schedule them in. So I can talk about all the books that are from this point on to the end of the video. So. There are several of them, like the vast majority of them, I think, are um, romances and they're for various age groups. So I'm going to go through them relatively quickly. And there are, I think, two of them are uh, nonfiction related as well. So I'll just highlight them as I go through each of these. So the first one that I want to highlight is... Um, from an author that I've read before, I have picked up the tried to pick up this book from the library several times. It was one of those times where like it had been requested multiple times, and so I decided to buy a copy for myself. I have read from this author before. I've read One True Loves and really, really enjoyed it. So this is Happily Ever Afters by Elise Bryant. As you can see, this is a cover for this, and I'm really excited to be able to have this in my collection, and I will give my thoughts on it as soon as I finish up with it. Second, two books that I want to highlight are nonfiction related, and they're both writing related as well. So I, I knew I wanted to pick these up and support the authors for these. The first one is um, Black Writers on Craft, Practice, and Skill. This is How We Do It. This is edited by Jericho Brown. And as you can see, this is the cover for your reference, but it is a compilation of several uh, Black authors who are talking about their craft and in terms of things. It's basically how they do it. So I knew I wanted to read this. 
it, I will probably put this in with my craft books and probably do a review of several writing craft books that inspire me in terms of the writing that I do and give my thought, respective thoughts about it uh, once I um, pick it up and am able to read it. And then this one, this is not the only type of book that I have on this respective subject, but this is one that is new to me. So I, I happen to see it on the website to be able to pick up to um, read and I'm curious about it to, in terms of seeing what is done for the actual craft of this. This is How to Write Erotica by Rachel Kramer Bustle. So you can see this is the cover for it. So it should be interesting to be able to see the anatomy of, no pun intended, anatomy of looking at stories that are written in terms of erotica, erotic romance, like the different umbrellas of erotica in terms of like what is goes into the craft of these uh, kinds of stories. And I was curious to be able to um, pick this up and um, see what it had to offer on the subject. So I will be reading this. And once I'm finished, then I can give my thoughts about it. But really interesting selection from uh, the Meet Cute Bookshop. I'm very glad that I've had the opportunity to be able to pick up several books from them, especially with holiday money that my relatives gave me. So I was like, okay, I'm going on a book shopping haul. Let's just go ahead and do it. But those are a few of the books. So I'll get into the next, um, the last bit of um, these, um, the haul that I got from this book uh, shop soon. I think this one is the only single book that I have out of the rest of the haul that I got from this bookshop. So this is one that I originally got as a galley. I wanted a physical copy and it happened to be a signed copy. So this is one that I am very excited to be able to um, read and give my thoughts on. This is Kathy Yardley's Role Playing. As you can see, this is the cover for it. As you can see, it has a little cute sticker saying it's a signed copy and it is a signed copy with a book plate. So I I'm really excited to be able to um, give my thoughts on this and um, I'm looking forward to picking it up. I don't know if I'm going to be, it may, it's probably definitely going to be 2024 by the time I pick this up. So we'll see how this goes. So these next two books are actually part of the same series. And I don't think I have, I didn't have these um, particular books in my own collection before, though I am very familiar with the uh, writer. This is considered to be the Covert Affairs um, series by uh, Nana Malone and this it's one that I have not picked up um, quite yet so um, when I saw um, that they were on sale and um, available in the bookshop I was like okay like let me um, go ahead and um, order both of them since it's part of the same duology so the first um, book in this respective series um, in covert affairs is the spy in 3b and this is the cover for your reference. I think they may have updated the covers since this was published. If they did, I will put um, the updated cover up here for your reference in case. But this is the first book in that respective series. And then the second book in this duology is The Assassin in 5F. And as you can see, this is the cover for this for your reference. If they had an updated cover for it, I will put it up here for your reference as well. But I am planning on reading both of these books and giving my thoughts about them once I'm done. Then we have a hockey romance series that I was not 100% if it was still available in print copies. I know it's available digitally and I know that you can get all six of the books that are in this respective series um, via audiobook as well as um I think um, on Kindle, if I remember correctly, but this is under Karina Press, and this is by Rachel Reed. This is a um, a gay hockey series, uh, a sports uh, romance um, hockey series that has had a lot of accolades, and I wanted to pick this up for myself in terms of being able to start it, and I did not realize that they had like book um, physical books for the first two and the sixth uh, book in the series. So I went ahead and picked it up. So the very first book in that series is Game Changer. This is the Game Changer se series by Rachel Reed. It's the first book. Second book in this series is Heated Rivalry. This is the cover. 
and I think it has a bonus story in it um, as well, but I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'll talk about it when I have the chance to pick it up. And then the sixth book in this respective series, which this was published back um, in 2022, this is The Long Game. This is the cover for your reference. And I think I do have two, like, I think I had purchased the other books in this respective series digitally, if I remember correctly, but the, it did surprise me that they had physical copies. So I went ahead and said, I wanted to add this to my collection. So I, I went ahead and placed an order and um, uh, added those to my collection. So I'm looking forward to being able to read those and give you my thoughts once I'm done. And then the very last bit for this respective book haul video, this is, I think, two books within the same series that I've already had in my collection, but they had physical copies at the bookstore. So I knew I wanted to get them. This is published by um, Source Books, and it is considered Paranormal Regency Romance, which is kind of my bread and butter in some um, ways, um, like from some of the books that I've been able to read in terms of things. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to uh, see what this has to offer. But I've heard great things about this respective series. This is considered to be a part of the Shapeshifters of the Beaumont um, series by Susanna Allen. The first book in this series is A Wolf in Duke's Clothing. This is the cover for this for your reference. And then the second book in this respective series is A Most Unusual Duke. And this is the cover for your reference as well. I'm excited to be able to read this respective series as well and give my thoughts about it. And I think, I think that might be it for this respective book haul video. Not very long. <laughs> And um, I'm very happy to have gotten the massive, massive haul that I've been able to get. Uh, again, this has probably been over several weeks, even like a, like a month's worth of books. And also with some of the money that I was able to get for the holiday, because I know my relatives know that I love books. So, of course, I use my um, holiday money on um, a, book, a massive book haul in terms of things. But um I, I'm looking forward to being able to read all of them and get my thoughts eventually. So there's that. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell to be informed of when I post new videos. Thank you again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Wonderful rest of 2023 going into 2024. And um, I will see you again soon. Bonus edition of being able to show off this really cute uh, tote bag that I also got from the bookshop. This is from also from Meet Cute uh, Bookshop. Stay late at the bookshop. That's really cute. And then also a little postcard saying greetings from uh, Romance Landia. So, like uh, th as I mentioned before, this um, indie bookstore is located in San Diego, and I'm definitely planning on. Um, being able to go there um, the next time that I'm like in the um, area. So um, there's that. <laughs>